So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our first, um, hopefully that will be the only major bug we have, virtual training for Headquarters Rio. Um, and uh, we are about to start. We did have a few technical difficulties, so for those of you that were struggling with that, I do apologize. There was a, a button I didn't press. So let's get going. Um, this is a, a military training event, so of course I need to tell you what I'm going to tell you and then tell you. Um, so this is what we're going to be covering today. First, I am going to um, do some quick introductions and then um, cover some rules of engagement for the way the system works. Then we're going to talk about IDT lodging reimbursement, who files, when you're supposed to file, what you should do while you're there to make sure you're prepared to file, then what to file, how to file, and I think this is important, what you should expect afterward. And so we'll lay all that out for you. Uh, some introductions. So uh, I am the talking head, Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Carl. I'm the public affairs officer for Headquarters Rio. Headquarters Rio is in the uh, Air Reserve Personnel Center building at Buckley Air Force Base, just east of Denver, Colorado. And um, I, as I said, I'm the public affairs officer, so I am not the, the head of travel. Um, we are lucky enough to have some members of the travel office, um, including the chief of the travel section, who is Mr. Jose Ruiz, and then a couple of his team members. He has a team of about 20 or so supervisors, auditors, and technicians who work these tickets as they're submitted. Um, and then we have a couple of Headquarters Rio staff members online um, to act as moderators, and I'll talk to you in just a moment about what that is. Um, I also want to point out that we have some amazing people at Headquarters Rio who work tirelessly to try to improve our systems and make it easy for you to serve. Uh, but a lot of them have not spent time as an IMA, but I am an IMA. Um, I'm actually on RPA doing this job and I've loved it. I just started in January. So um, what I want you to know is I have been where you are. I am where you are. I have filed for lodging reimbursement countless times and I've had tickets kicked back countless times. So my goal here is to tell you how you're supposed to do all this stuff so that you can correctly submit your ticket the first time, the technician can work that ticket quickly and check it off the list, and then you get paid. Um, so I am IMA to IMA here. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is there are a couple times during this training where I'm going to be referring to the new IDT Lodging Reimbursement Quick Guide. We just published that a week or two ago. You may be familiar with the IR guide. It is a, gosh, 70, 80 page document that has everything you need to know about being an IR. And by the way, in case you're not familiar with the IR term, that actually means IMAs and PIRR. So um, we have members who are participating individual ready reservists that also fall under headquarters Rio. So not everybody is an IMA. So you will hear a lot of us say IRs, and yes, we're talking about you. So um, if you um, haven't yet seen that quick guide, you can find it on the Headquarters Rio website. If you click on the Individual Reservist Guide button, it'll take you to a page where the full guide is there. Um, and by the way, that guide is in the process of being updated. Um, and then our quick guides are also there. Now there's only one quick guide now because we're still working on it. Uh, there are more coming, um, but that can be a really great resource where the IR guide is, has a lot of why and you know regulations and you know big picture stuff the quick guides are specifically how how do i file for this how do i put in for that how do i work this particular system so that's what we're working towards uh, on the ir guide you can also access it at the headquarters rio connect app on your smartphone um, and i'll talk a little bit about that at the very end if you don't have that app up and running on your phone i highly recommend that you do um, but if you go to the main menu and click on the IR toolkit, you will see resources and the IR guide and quick guides are there. All right, let's talk about some rules of engagement. This is an event run through Microsoft Teams, um, which is what the Air Force is calling CBR. So um, if you have not yet activated your account on CBR, I highly recommend you do it as soon as possible. If you get into your .mil email, you should have been receiving emails over the last few months uh, with activation information for your account. And one of the things that has in the emails is your username. The username looks a lot like an email, but it ends in cbr.mil. So if you use that as a search function in your email, you might be able to find 
uh, one or two of those emails that were sent to you. And then it gives you a temporary password and gives you the instructions for setting up your CDR account. Uh, it's really great because you can use it on a personal computer and even on a smartphone to connect and chat and do teleworking with the other members of your unit. It's fantastic. Um, so this is a special kind of event in CVR called a live event. The video and the audio are one direction only, which means you see me and you hear me, but that's the only person you're going to see or hear today. All of you attendees, um, I can't see you and I can't hear you. The only way you can connect with us is using the Q&A chat function. Um, so I just wanted to cover that real fast. Um, first, if you have a question, if you could wait for me to cover that section of what I'm going to talk about first, because I may answer your question in the briefing. But if I don't, please, by all means, post a question in the chat. That chat is moderated, which means when you post that question, everybody else doesn't see it. Only the moderators do. The moderator will answer your question, and if the question and answer is something that's applicable to the group, they'll publish it so that everybody can see it. If it's more of a specific thing just to answer to you, or if you're just telling us something, um, then we're not gonna publish that for everybody. Um, so keep in mind that those questions and answers are moderated. Um, and, and just stay in the training lane of IDT lodging reimbursements. I'm sure you have questions about a lot of other things connected to being an IR, I do too. Um, but at the very end, I'm going to give you a way to um, fill out a survey for us. And in that, um, we have a place for you to suggest topics for future training events. So anything not related to this specific topic, if you could just hold off and put it in that survey, incredibly helpful for us. Um, we'd really appreciate that. Um, after this event is over, there will be a recording available at the same link and um, and you can watch it again and fast forward through the silliness that happened at the beginning. Um, and also the questions that you post, we're able to pull a report out of Teams and, and get those printed out so we can look and see what questions you have and what we can um, you know, fix up and, and do in the future to, to make sure we get those questions answered for you. Okay. Let's get into it. So um, if you live um, far enough away from your home of from your duty location to the home of record, that allows you um, to file for IDT lodging reimbursement. Um, you are authorized reimbursement for the night prior to your first IDT and the nights during your IDTs. Now, here are a few things that you need to keep in mind and take care of before you even leave to go serve your IDTs. One is that you have a government travel card that's available and ready to use. Um, we are mandated to use the government travel card for uh, travel purposes. So the government travel card, that's run from your reg app or your active duty unit. So if you have issues with your GTC, you need to contact your regular, your reg app or active duty supervisor and get in touch with the person there at that unit that oversees the GTCs so they can help you out. That's not something um, to that, that we take care of at Headquarters Rio, okay? Um, next is uh, look up the hotel tax policy for your state. Some states actually waive hotel taxes for official government travel, including military. Um, there is a website that is on um, the IR quick guide that you can check the state and see if it's one that waives those fees. Now, sometimes they want you to show orders. Well, if we're on IDTs, we're not on orders, right? Um, but sometimes they just wanna see your, your CAC um, it, it really differs state by state and hotel chain to hotel chain. This is really just a matter of being a good steward of government money. If you end up paying taxes or having to pay taxes in an exempt state for IDT lodging, you will get reimbursed for those. But, you know, it's our tax dollars, right? It kind of loops around in a, in a happy little circle there. Um, and you're, you're going to be saving the government money if you can get those fees and taxes waived. So check that website that's on the quick guide and, and download the forms and see if you can save the government a, a dollar or two. Uh, next, you need to make sure if you're working on a base, you need to try to stay on base. The, the rules about um, staying in on base lodging are the same for IDTs as they are for any other, you know, AT or, or long time orders. Now, if billeting is full, 
you will need to get a non-availability and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Another thing you need to think about is do you need a room for the night after your last IDT? Now I said earlier that, that you will get reimbursed for the night prior and the nights during, but normally you will not be reimbursed for lodging the night after your last IDT. But sometimes depending on where you live versus where you serve, there's no way for you to get home before midnight of that last day and you're going to need to um, stay in the hotel to catch a flight the next morning maybe. That's fine, but you're going to need to do an MFR for that and I'll talk about that in a minute. So that's just something to think about before you go. Um, the last thing is a paper 40A. Now if we're using UTAPs, we really don't need to have a, a piece of paper with us. But I have found a few different times that printing out a 40A um, and, and having it filled out and just putting it in my purse or you know side of my bag or whatever to show can be helpful. For instance, if you're trying to get the taxes waived at um, off base lodging in a particular state, that looks official enough to the people who work the front desk who probably don't know the difference and what orders look like to go ahead and waive the taxes. Um, but, and it also just proves that you are in a legal status. So it's never a bad idea to have that paper 40A with you. Okay, during your stay, let's talk about non-availability. So if you are working on a base and lodging is full and you need to stay off base, then you will need to have a non-availability when you file for IDT lodging reimbursement. Now, Sometimes it's just a matter of walking into lodging and asking and they give it to you, but sometimes it's not. Um, we have had members who have had issues because they're not technically on orders, they're on a 40A, um, but they should give it to you. So this is where the I am an adult part of being an IMA comes from. And you know, having been there myself many times, it can definitely be frustrating when um, you know, the rule is the rule, but you go in and ask them to fulfill the rule and they don't. So it's sometimes you have to ask for a supervisor um, and, and run it up that chain there at billeting. Um, but you will need to have one. So if you want to get reimbursed, you need to figure out what the deal is at that particular lodging and get a non-availability statement. There are a few army bases um, with contract lodging that will not do it just flat out. We have a list of those at Headquarters Rio, and so um, the travel office knows that you're not going to be able to provide one. But other than that, you need to, you know, hopefully it won't be a big deal, but if it turns into a big deal, you'll need to ask for a supervisor or maybe ask somebody in your office to give you a hand talking to someone. Um, and keep in mind that there are some bases that don't have lodging, right? So if they don't have lodging, there's, there's no place to get a non-availability from, and obviously you're gonna have to stay off base. Okay, so that's the non-availability spiel. Um, when you are finished, you need to have a receipt. The receipt for your lodging needs to have your name on it, needs to have the name and location of the lodging, whether on or off base. It needs to have the daily rate, and they'll usually break it out because especially off base, a lot of hotels will have a different rate for different nights, so that needs to be broken out. And if you were charged taxes, um, th those taxes need to be shown on that receipt as well. Normally all hotels do this automatically, but it's just good for you to know that you need to have that information on there. Um, if you uh, are staying at a place that's going to waive the taxes, usually there's a form that you fill out and give to the front desk. Um, so keep in mind during your stay that you might need to print out that form and fill it out and hand it to the front desk so they can waive the taxes for you. Um, all right, if you need to stay in lodging the day after your last IDT or that night, then you need to do an MFR. Um, I recommend that you go ahead and have it printed out and ready so that your supervisor can sign it while you're there. That way it's done. There is um, on the quick guide as well as on the travel page on the Headquarters Rio website, there is a um, template to use for the MFR. It says on there that it's for your deck commander's signature, but your uh, active duty supervisor signature is fine too. 
Um, so either way, but it, you do need to have an MFR to cover that last night or it's not going to get reimbursed, okay? All right, now let's get into what you need to file. So there are three main things that everybody is going to need to submit to file for reimbursement. The first thing is proof that you worked the IDTs. Now there are two ways to do that. One is a certified 40A, which is the old way, if you will. That's a, a 40A that has all three signatures on it, either digital or wet. That suffices for saying that, you know, the days were approved and then I worked them, right? And then you sign it as well. So that's all three signatures. Now, for those of us who use UTEPs for a lot of stuff, which we all should, um, there is another way to do it. If you go into UTAPS, you can do a color screenshot of your UTAPS calendar and an automated 40A, which comes out of that. Now, I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step instructions here in just a minute on how to get those two things out of UTAPS. But that's the first thing, is proof that you worked the IDTs. The second is proof that you paid for lodging, and that's your receipt. And just make sure it has the items on there that I listed. The third thing is the voucher, and that's the OF 1164. It needs to be filled out and it needs to be signed by you and your supervisor. I'm also going to go over that document in this training to show you exactly how to fill it out and what to make sure to put on it. Okay, proof that you work the IDTs. A certified 40A, like I said, this is the old way. You have the three signatures on it. They can be digital or wet. That from the signatures are you and then two different supervisors, uh, the two signatures from supervisor. Uh, one of them saying, yes, I approve this person to work these days. And then one saying, yes, the person worked. The other is the color screenshot of your UTAPS calendar. Now, when you do UTAPS and you, you have worked the IDTs, you go in and you click and mark them worked. Then your supervisor gets an email and goes into UTAPS and marks those paid. When the supervisor does that, the days turn black and you need to wait for those days to turn black because that's the picture that you need to get the screenshot of, okay? Then the automated 40A, that prints from UTAPS um, and there are step-by-step -step instructions on that IDT lodging reimbursement quick guide that show you how to do that, but I'm gonna do that here as well. Okay, this is how to get an automated 40A out of UTAPS. When you are logged into UTAPS, you need to go to reports and select automated form 40s. Then you'll see a screen that shows your name. Now I've covered the name up here with the gray block, but it's going to open up to the one with your name on it. You might need to scroll down, it's alphabetical order. It's pretty easy to figure out where you are. Then you're gonna click that little plus sign next to your name and it's gonna expand that selection. Now you will see uh, a bunch of little disks and dates up underneath your name. So you'll scroll until you see the dates for the IDTs in question, the, the IDTs that you're trying to do the 40A for. Now, um, you'll notice this screenshot has dates from 2011. This is my UTAPs, um, they're, they're still there. <laughs> so depending on how long you've been in IMA, you might have a, a long thing to scroll through to get to the current uh, IDT periods that you need. So then you want to select the first IDT period. So if you worked three days, um, then you want to select the first period of the first day. OK. Then you're going to select the tab that says combine form 40 A's. You see that bigger red arrow on the top pointing to those four tabs. One of those tabs says combine 40 A's. The system will identify other IDTs that could be in conjunction. So that block underneath it um, is going to be pre-filled with dates that the system identifies as being in the same period of IDTs. Then what you're gonna do is click combine and save. And what it's gonna do is put all of those on 140A, okay? Then you will select print individual 40As. Now, if you haven't selected an approving official, which you should have already in the system if you're using UTAPS. But if you haven't, then you're gonna click the little tab that says signing officials and, and go in there and put your approving official in to make sure it's loaded and then go back to the combined tab. Um, when you 
tell it to print, you're also going to be prompted whether or not you want to mask your social security number. You do not want to mask your social security number. You'll be submitting this through MyPERS, which can accept PII, and your social does need to be on it. One thing to keep in mind, if you worked more than seven periods, so three and a half days of IDTs, you can only combine seven of them on a 40A. So if you have 10 IDT periods that you need to create automated 40As for, you just do seven of them and then go back and do this little dance again and put the other three on a second one, okay? Now, how to do a UTAP screenshot. First, again, you need to make sure that the days that you are asking for reimbursement for are marked black on the calendar, which means your supervisor needs to act on that uh, for you to turn them black. So if they're still gray, it means your supervisor hasn't marked them work. And that's important because if they're not marked work, you're not gonna get paid for them, okay? So um, it's a really good quick discussion to have with your supervisor. Hey, you know, I'm gonna go home and Probably tomorrow I'm going to work uh, in UTAPs and get my days pushed forward. So, you know, I'll shoot you a text when I send you the UTAPs uh, approval. If you could go in there and mark those paid for me, that'd be great. Because if you do it really fast, you actually get paid really quickly. So it's a it's a nice thing all around. Um, so then you just need to have that UTAPs calendar up on your computer. And if you are using a PC, you just hit the print screen button. If you're using a Mac, uh, and I'm not a Mac girl, but I think it's command shift three, we'll do a screenshot. And then just open a document. It can be a Word document, PowerPoint, or it really doesn't matter. And you will use the paste function to paste that screenshot into the document. Then you wanna save it. I usually save it as a JPEG or as a PDF um, and label it. And that's gonna be one of the things that you will attach to your submission. Um, I do recommend that you crop out any extraneous items. You know, we don't need to see your ongoing bingo game in a tab, um, but do make sure that your name is still visible on that screenshot when you submit it, and it's in the uh, upper left-hand corner. So don't crop down just to the calendar because then it could be anybody's calendar. The technicians need to see your name on it. Okay. This is the uh, OF1164. This is the paper voucher that you use to get your reimbursement. Now, um, as I said, this, this example is in the quick guide, um, so you can always look there if you need to. So you'll put your name, your mailing address, and your social. Um, it says office phone number. Put your personal phone number. Basically, you want to put whatever phone number the technicians would need to use to call and ask you a question if they have a question about your submission. It doesn't have to be an office number. Okay, and then along the side under date, you're going to type the year in, and then underneath it, you'll write the dates of your IDTs. Then you've got the section that has the A, B, C, D, and E above it. Um, you're going to write out I IDT lodging reimbursement for IDTs performed and then the dates, okay? And it really does help if you use the formatting that we've put on here. This comes directly from the travel office, so this is what they like to see. Keep in mind, they see eight or nine hundred of these a month to the tune of a couple million dollars. So the easiest that we can make it for us, we make it for them. Things get processed quickly and everybody gets paid. All right, um, and then in the two section, you can write the location. So, you know, Buckley Air Force Base or Aurora, Colorado, whatever, whatever location it is that you worked at, and then what the daily rate is. And if the daily rate changes, then you can write down, you know, this amount of money for this date, this amount of money for that date. Um, now, underneath it, you'll notice a few things are highlighted. If you stayed the night prior, to your first IDT, you just need to make sure that that date is reflected in there, okay? You're authorized to get reimbursement for the night prior to your first IDT, but the dates that you put on here need to reflect that you stayed in lodging that night. So you need to have that, you know, if your first IDT was on the 5th, well, you checked in on the 4th, right? So the 4th needs to be the first date that's listed on this form. Um, so, it also says if you're charged different rates for different nights, you break that out and I mentioned that. If you're charged taxes, you need to list those separately right there. And then all the way over under amount claimed, that's where you need to put the total amount of the reimbursement, okay? 
Let's look at the bottom half of the form. Now I actually just learned this uh, getting ready for this training and making that quick guide. I didn't know we could do split disbursement on an 1164, but you can. So if you just want uh, the money to go directly to your GTC, then you can put that as a note uh, right on the 1164. So tell them the amount. Now notice I put $400 on here as my split disbursement, but the total amount of the voucher is 516. So once this is correctly um, submitted and processed by the technician, 400 of it would go to the GTC and 116 of it would come to me. Um, all right, you need to make sure you sign it. Very important. You need to make sure your supervisor signs it. OK, the last thing is um, at the very bottom, it says make sure you use the correct form. There used to be an SF-1164 that we could use, but we can't anymore. So make sure that you're using the OF-1164 um, to, to file for this. Otherwise, it'll get kicked back. All right, so those three things, proof that you worked, the receipt that shows that you paid for it, and then the 1164, those are mandatory. Every single person is gonna have to submit that um, for reimbursement. Now, there are some cases where you might have to add some extra things. One is that MFR. If you have a night of lodging after your last IDT, then you need to file an MFR along with it. Like I said, there's a link to the template on page two of the quick guide and it needs to be signed either by your debt commander or by a supervisor. If you wouldn't have the MFR ready to go when you get there, you just have your supervisor sign it and it's a whole lot faster and easier. Uh, Non-availability from base lodging. You will need to include this if you're staying off base but working on base. So hopefully that'll be an easy thing for you to get. The last thing is only if you have never uh, gotten an IDT lodging reimbursement before or if you've changed bank accounts. But the FMS 2231 is a direct deposit form. So um, if you have not yet had this type of reimbursement, then you need to do this form. This is a separate system from MillPay. So even if you're getting your regular MillPay direct deposited into your account, you would still need to do the FMS 2231 to make sure that this payment gets direct deposited into your account. And again, if you change bank accounts, the same thing holds true. Okay, let's talk about my PERS. Um, this is how you are going to submit for reimbursement. Now, I am gonna include some general my PERS, gonna drop some general my PERS knowledge on you here. Um, MyPERS is actually a pretty amazing program, but there is a ton of stuff on there and it can get hard to find what you need. I'm sure some of you have been um, in that situation. So the first thing I want you to know is when you log into MyPERS, you will see this screen. This is a partial screenshot. On the side, you can see the links under learn more about. There is an IMA management tab. That should always be your go-to for stuff, the IMA management tab especially for communicating with us, submitting for reimbursement, or you, you have a problem with something. And here's why. Up above it, under my account, you can see incidents and messages, right? And there is a place there where you can just send an email in. And you can, you know, use some drop downs and try to target it. But I'm telling you the vast amount of information that comes in from uh, military members in through the MyPer system is unreal. It really is. and. If you just send in a general message and try to maybe target the subject line or whatever, there's a really good chance that your message is going to get lost in some queue somewhere or be transferred from queue to queue because people aren't quite sure what to do with it. It's just a matter of volume. Now, what we have on here are a lot of custom submission forms, which means if you use the custom link, that question or reimbursement request goes directly to the person who can handle it. And it's going to save days and days of time, both your time and people's time at uh, HQ Rio trying to help you out. So um, use the IMA management tab and you can feel secure about your uh, social security number and all that stuff. Uh, my purse is totally able to handle PII stuff, so you should, you're good to go there. All right, when you get to the IMA management tab, this pulls up and you want to select IR travel requests. Now soon that name is probably going to change to IR travel reimbursement requests, but same, same. Okay, so that's what you want to click on. That's going to take you to this, 
the travel section. Then you select submit travel requests by clicking here. OK, I know it sort of sounds like you're requesting travel. Again, it's going to be changed to submit travel reimbursement requests by clicking here, but you get the idea. All right, and then this customized message comes up. This is what's going to make sure that your reimbursement request goes directly to the technicians who need to work it. Really, really important for the way my purse works. You're going to put in your social security number. You'll select air reserve, then select officer or enlisted, and then you're going to choose travel IDT lodging only. Now there's a, a quite a drop down there as you can see, so make sure that you're selecting the correct subject. That's how the system knows which technician to send it to. So you are asking for travel reimbursement request, okay? Uh, excuse me, I IDT lodging only travel reimbursement. And now you can write a message. Write a short note that requests reimbursement for IDT lodging. IMA to IMA here, I'm just going to say, please realize you're talking to real people who, who work these tickets day after day after day. Say hello, be pleasant, okay? And give them the information that they need to be able to work your ticket. You don't want to put a lot in there. They've, they're busy. We want them to be able to work the ticket so that you guys get reimbursed. But it's a nice time to just randomly say, hey, hope you're having a good day. I, I don't know, just kind of me. Um, so put a little note in there. Tell them you're requesting IDT lodging reimbursement and that you've attached the forms. Then underneath it is a browse button. You'll use that browse button to attach the forms that you need to submit with the request. OK, so again, at minimum, you're going to be attaching your 1164. You're going to be attaching your receipt. You're going to be attaching either the certified 40A or the color screenshot of the UTAPS calendar and the automated 40A. So either three or four documents, depending on how you're doing it. And if you need it, the MFR needs to get attached and the non-availability needs to get attached, OK? All right, please make sure that you have all the documents you need. And one of the things I find helpful is I name them in a way that makes it easy for the technician to see what they're looking at. You know, lodging receipt for these dates, Carl. Um, it makes it easy for me to find later in my system, but I think it probably also, I, I mean, I don't know, I haven't worked the tickets. It just seems like it would make it a little easier for them if they were named something that makes sense. OK, let's talk about what to expect. So technicians are currently processing IDT lodging reimbursements within two to three business days, which is amazing because about a year ago it was seven to ten and sometimes even more. They have brought on some RPA technicians to help work tickets. Um, they're updating systems um, and and really, really working hard to try to make it easy for you to serve and get you reimbursed for the money that you that you need and have coming to you. Um, so you can expect that ticket to be worked in about two to three business days, okay? Now, if you go to the Headquarters Rio travel section, um, every week we update the processing times. So if you have an idea um, or want to get an idea of how quickly they're working tickets, you can always check. Um, and those are also available on the Connect app under travel um, and then just select processing times and you can see that. If you need more information, if the technician needs you to provide more information, he or she will contact you via MyPERS. So this is where I'm gonna make my pitch. If you're not receiving in your personal email MyPERS messages, right now when this training is over, go into MyPERS, go to your profile, which it's right up in the corner underneath the incidents and messages, and put a good personal email into that profile. Um, we send out the Rio Buzz every two weeks. You should be getting that. Um, I, I don't even know how many messages I've gotten via my purse in the last couple of weeks. But if you feel like you haven't heard from us recently, it's not for lack of trying. We're sending stuff out via email and social media and the Connect app. But you're not going to be seeing those my purse messages um, unless you have a personal email in there or you're in your dot mail all the time which a lot of us aren't if we're not uh, in status. So please, please put a good personal email in there so that you get the information that we're trying to send out to you. Um, and that's how the technician is going to contact you. Um, now, if they contact you and you don't reply back after a while, they're just going to close the ticket. And can you blame them? I mean, if, if they're trying to get a hold of you to get information and you're not providing it back, 
IMA to IMA, I'm telling you that's going to be a little bit on you. All right, so pay attention to those messages and check back and make sure you're providing that technician what he or she needs to be able to process your ticket. They want to get those closed out. All right. Um, the funds will hit your account or your GTC within about two weeks. Um, I always think it's a good idea to go back into my purse, um, you know, after a few days and see what the status of the ticket is. If it's closed, they've processed it and didn't have any more questions. So you should be receiving that money soon. Um, if they have more questions, they will have contacted you and you need to reply back and give them what they need. Um, so as I said, that my purse ticket will be marked closed. Uh, once the question or once the processing is complete. Now, let's say that there is a discrepancy between the amount that you received and the amount that you put on the 1164, or you have some other question about this particular reimbursement request. Don't open a new ticket, okay? If you ever see in the incidents and messages in my PERS that a ticket is closed, you can still reply to it and it will open up that ticket. And the beautiful thing about it is it's going to go back to the same person that worked it originally. So it's not like somebody new has to get spun up on whatever's going on. So um, it's it's a hundred times easier if you have a question about a particular type of reimbursement to just go into the closed ticket, reply with whatever you need, and it'll reopen that ticket and send it back to that original technician. Um, that that's also related to don't bundle requests. Um, you know, let's say you worked three IDTs in one week and then the next week you worked another three IDTs. You need to submit two separate tickets for that reimbursement. Don't bundle them both into the same message. That makes it really difficult for them. They have to end up doing the separating. So, you know, it's not a big deal. Just do it twice and put each thing as its own submission, okay? Don't open multiple tickets for the same request. Again, if you have questions about a ticket, reply back within that single incident, that single ticket, so it's all in one place. Okay. The tickets are reviewed by a technician and an auditor before funds are dispersed, so that's why it takes a couple days before the funding goes out. Um, there are a lot of laws and regulations and AFIs and all kinds of stuff that the technicians in the travel section are held responsible for. So that's why they're asking for things like a non-availability or an MFR because they're held accountable for whether they're paying things out the correct way according to the law. Um, so keep in mind, that's why there's a little bit of time for some of this stuff to happen. Now, if you want to see if you're going to get paid or how much you got paid and why, you can log into MyPay, which is the DFAS website, you're going to select Travel Voucher Advice of Payment, AOP. Okay, so normally you would select your LES if you wanted to see your pay stub, but for travel reimbursements, they come in as an advice of payment. And it's going to have a breakdown in whatever notes. So if there's like a difference in the amount or something, that will be explained on there. And again, if you have questions, go into the incident, reply back, open it back up. Okay. Just a little bit about the GTC. Um, I know for IMAs, the GTC can be kind of a pain. I get it. I've had one for years and years, but the use of it is mandatory. It's public law. Airline tickets, lodging, rental cars. So unless you're, well, you're not on orders for these anyway, but the only time you're not uh, held accountable to using it is if your orders say no GTC. So the fact is you need to use it. You can use it in addition for meals, incidentals, IDT travel costs, hotel and lodging only. So some of this is for other types of travel, but what's important on here is that you do need to use it for your IDT lodging, okay? Um, so that pretty much covers everything you need to know for basic IDT lodging reimbursement. Like I said, everything I've said is on the quick guide, so you can always refer to that if you need to, because sometimes we go months, right, without doing something and you might forget a little bit, although why you haven't completely memorized everything I've said over the last 40 minutes, I don't know. Um, but this is where, because I'm the PAO, I'm going to put a plug in for PAO stuff because <laughs> I control it. Yay me. Um, we are working really, really hard to keep in contact with all of you. There are almost 8,000 IRs spread literally around the globe, um, and some of you are more connected to your active duty jobs and to the reserve um, than others. 
So um, I just want to quickly go over some of the places where you can find information um, and also just ask you, hey, if you ever run into any other IMAs, ask them if they're using this stuff um, and, and help us get them connected to us. So the first thing is my PERS. A lot of messaging goes out on my PERS. All right. And again, please make sure you've got a good personal email. You should be receiving those emails in your personal email. If you're, if you're not, either it's not in the system or you've got a spam blocker on it, but you need to fix it. OK, uh, the Rio Buzz is a newsletter that Colonel Bailey, the commander of headquarters Rio, puts out every two weeks. It's very short and sweet, just the information that you really need to know. But trust me, a lot of it is information you really need to know. There are things happening, even if you're not in status, that you as a reservist need to be aware of, OK? Um, so make sure that you're getting those other messages and the Rio Buzz every couple of weeks. The Rio Connect phone app is a smartphone app. Uh, it's available for Android and iPhone. If you go to the Headquarters Rio website, um, there is a link um, up in the corner for the Connect app. Um, it's also, I, I'm sure somewhere on the Facebook page, I've done it, I'll probably post another one on there soon. Um, but it's easy to download and get started. And the one of the really cool things is most of the detachments, not all of them, but most of them have a chat feature that is really fantastic for crowdsourcing questions and information. So uh, to do the chat feature, you go to your group, there are the groups button on the app, and like, you know, let's say you're debt five, the code is Rio debt five, no spaces, and that will allow you to join that group um, and allow you to participate in that chat. I think you're really going to dig that. Um, but I also, we push out messages. Um, hopefully a good portion of you saw the advertisement for this training on, on announcements that were pushed out through the Connect app. So the other thing is from the main menu of the Connect app, all the resources that you need, the you know, the quick guides and the IR guides and dates of things. And a lot of it is basically connected to the website. So um, it just makes it really easy for you to get to it. So highly recommend Rio Connect is what you want to search for in the Play Store, or you can get the links for it um, from the website. Um, Facebook, if you are a Facebooker, and even if you're not, just make a fake profile so that you can get to stuff like this. Um, there's some great groups and stuff on Facebook as well. But the coolest page is the Headquarters Rio page, which is facebook.com forward slash HQRIO. Um, we post a lot of stuff there, and um, it's a really, if you go, you can follow it, and then from the drop down, you can select see first, which means announcements from us will always come up at the very top every time you, you log into Facebook. So um, really a great resource. And then, of course, the Headquarters Rio website, which is a, a subsite off of the Air Reserve Personnel Center webpage. Um, we have all kinds of information there because we need all kinds of information. Um, there's a lot of things that are different for us as IRs, and we at, at Headquarters Rio are well aware of that. So we're, we're trying to get as much information as possible out to you. Um, and, and that's one of the ways we do it. A lot of it is published um, on that website. So check that out. If you ever have questions, that that or the Rio Connect app should be your first place to go. OK, we made it to the end of the IDT lodging reimbursement training session. Woo -hoo. All right, um, so I would really appreciate it if you can get your smartphone out, hold it up. Now, if you're using your smartphone right now, you can take a screenshot of this um, and be able to use the QR code. But if you are watching on a laptop or a computer, if you just pull the camera up on your phone, most of the cameras automatically recognize QR codes. If your camera does not, there are apps that do it. Um, so take a picture of it and then get the app and load the picture into the app. But this is taking you to a quick Google survey form, a little, just a little questionnaire with um, requesting some feedback from you about this training event. Um, we'd you know, we want to use it to help improve our communications with you, improve the training, and help us pick future topics. Um, you know, kind of get a vector from you guys about what information you really need to hear and how soon you need to hear from it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to leave this up on the screen for a few. Um, and uh, let's see, do that and then do that. <laughs>